All right, so we're almost at the very end. We just have to run our group analysis and then run the QA for it. So this will be a quick one. For um, review, I do have a bunch of videos for setting up group design matrices. There's a playlist on the YouTube channel. If I can link it via YouTube, I will here. If I can't, just look for the link in the description box of this video. So other than that, uh, let's just go to the GUI and I'll show you how I, how I set this one up. All right, so here's the GUI. I've actually already filled it all in. Um, we've already been through this. In the MISC tab, I usually turn off the balloon help and the, the, the progress watcher. You can turn it on if you want, but I usually have it off. Um, I have 14 inputs because I'm running the DSO 08 data set and that's, that's how many subjects there are. Uh, recall we're getting rid of subject 8 because they had um, some issues with their data, so we're using the rest of the subjects. So I'm using the inputs are 3D cope images from feed directories. You could also use cope Im or um, lower level feed directories as the option but I'm using copes, so I will do it that way. So I'll show you a trick for putting the copes in. It's not super magical, but, and I may have done this for the level two analysis. So you can see I need to put all these paths in here, and there's a paste button here. So I try to take advantage of paste when I can, and I'll show you what I did to get all these paths. So it's over here. So you can see if I type the command ls and then I put the path to the subject directory and then put a wildcard in, just a star, and then the remainder of the path to, now this is where you have to be careful. I'm using the cope2.feet directory. So hopefully you've spent some time looking at your level twos. So this two here corresponds to the second contrast in the level one analysis. So that's what this stands for. And then the one here on COPE 1 corresponds to the first contrast in the second level analysis. So this is the average greater than zero of the second COPE. Um, and you can look up what that is in a second. So if I just do LS of all this, it gives me all of the paths that I need. Sometimes you luck out and they fit on the screen. You can just copy and paste it from the screen. Um, It'll put, this, this one won't work though because it wrapped the text and it, um, it registers when you copy and paste as a return instead of a, a line wrap. So all I did was I dumped it into a text file called junk and then I opened junk in Aquamax over here and then I could just copy it and paste it in. Um, just a reminder, make sure if you're using a text editor, don't use the built-in uh, text editor on the Mac or the PC. Uh, I forget what the Mac one's called. I think it's text edit. Um, it can put weird characters in that you won't see, but Linux will see them and will complain. So use something like Text Wrangler or Aquamax or whatever. There are a ton of them. Okay, so I copied this and then I pasted it into this window and then I was done. And then it pasted them into here, hit okay. And if any of your paths were wrong, FSL will complain. So when that happens, sometimes it's a pain to figure out which one's causing it. So I'll start by cutting um, this to seven. At, like if, if you just, if you cut this down, say it on eight, and hit select cope images, it automatically takes the first eight. So I'll try these and hit OK and see if I get an error message. And then I'll try, you know, I'll keep trimming it back until I don't get the error. And then I have found the one that caused the error. Um, get back to 14. Make sure we are, we're all good here. Yeah, it's just a, a little bit of hunting. But of course, you've run such a good QA on your level twos that you should know that those files already exist. Okay, the only other, well, there's two more tabs. The stats tab, now we're gonna use flame one because we're at the um, highest level. You can try the outlier de-weighting. Um, I find it takes a really long time and it doesn't typically make a huge difference, but sometimes it can. 
uh, but it, it adds a considerable amount of time to your results. So um, yeah, take that into consideration. And my group level analysis is just a one sample t-test. So I have a column of ones and I have two contrasts, one to test the mean greater than zero and one to test the mean less than zero. So that's done. Design matrix looks good. Last is post stats, and we're finally going to um, look at some inferent or look at some uh, thresholded maps. So for your threshold and go a cluster. Um, of course, we've all uh, read uh, Anders Eklund, um, probably Senator Eklund's paper about this thresholding strategy, and compared to other well. Other software packages tend to have inflated false positives, false positive rates. FSL's Flame 1, which is what we're using here, is actually conservative. The type 1 error rate is under 0.05. So you might miss some stuff, but I also have a video on how to use randomize, and you can just dump in all the files you need for randomize will exist in this group level feed directory. So it's super easy to run randomize. All right, so once you have that set up, you can hit go and then you wait and typically it takes, I don't know, it depends on how big your model is. This one should probably run pretty quickly. Uh, let's see, what else do I wanna say? I think that is it. See, it's really simple. You've done all the hard work up to here and then, um, then you can run a bunch of group models. Oh, I guess I didn't show you this, but I set the, uh, the output name right here. So COPE2 was fail stop minus successful stop. So that's what I'm going to name my group gfeed directory. Oops, and I don't want a bunch of X's in there. All right, that's it. It's a real short one. I'll do the QA. That's the last step, and that'll be it for the FSL series. So please join the Facebook group or follow on Tumblr or Twitter or all three. And thanks for watching and have a great day.